There's a lot of discussion now going on about resilience and uh, there are attempts to try and understand. From where I stand and when I look around uh, in the LDC context, it's important to, when there is an emergency, of course, to address that. But there has to be a pre-disaster, pre-emergency stage where we build the communities, the citizens and the societies that we are working in so that they can address the emergency, but they should be able to not go back to a situation of where they were vulnerable or they were below the poverty line, but to graduate out of it. Given the disaster is going to change, displace, let's make that into an opportunity where they can build better. It's quite obvious that when there's an emergency, there's suddenly a lot of mobilization, particularly in terms of the fund, the resources that come forward. But in a pre-disaster situation, it's very difficult to mobilize that sort of resources. But it is so important to invest in those conditions. Therefore, I would think that first and foremost, our policymakers and development partners must invest in preparedness, in disaster management, and of course also in hu humanitarian response. They have to look at severe disasters and slow onslaught disasters and prepare the community for that. The communities actually try and address these problems on their own. They don't often have the luxury of time. They build on their social capital, they build on their indigenous knowledge. So why aren't we investing in that? It's important to nurture and cultivate the indigenous knowledge, the social capital in the communities at the grassroots and in the front line, and make sure that we invest supporting people's organizations, CBOs, grassroots organizations, at the same time, invest in the institutions that are supposed to be supporting them. Invest in mechanism that is going to support the community to become resilient.